right. Hi, Sybil. Hey, Sybil. Hey. Um, so last week we were talking about financial literacy at home and I was supposed to talk to Sybil on Friday and I had a little hiccup with my childcare. So we're talking today instead. Um, so I'm super excited because Sybil's one of my favorite people and you should go <laughs> check her out on uh, Mamas and Coffee. Uh, I linked her page in the comments and then later we can link the group too because it's an awesome <laughs> group for moms or um, people who just are awesome humans. <laughs> I was in the group way before I was a mom um, and it prepared me. So uh, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Sybil. Sybil is a Navy wife, mother of three tween and teen girls. Oh my gosh. An owner of a silly little Maltese named Carlos. He's very cute. She's a graduate of the University of Memphis, where she received her BBA in logistics and marketing. Her passion is to empower others in life with her messages of know you, be you, love you. She enjoys sharing her experiences, advice, and two cents about life. You can also find her being oh so real, raw, funny, and supportive at her site, mamasandcoffee.com. And we'll link that below as well. Um, and really, you guys should not... Um, sleep on following all of her social media channels because uh, Sybil's videos are awesome, posts are awesome. Um, and today we're going to be talking to Sybil about how she handles teaching her girls about financial literacy at home. Um, and I learned kind of about this a little bit by watching one of your videos a while back, talking about <laughs> how you guys do finances at home now that your girls are tweens and teens and a little bit more, you know, with it. Yes. Um, so would you mind just telling us first, just so we can get some background, like how you were taught about finances when you were a kid? Um, the way I was taught about finances as a kid was my mama would always tell me, if you don't have any money, <laughs> you don't need it. And I'm like, whoa, what? Like, that was her lesson. If you do not have any money, you do not need this. And of course, as a kid, you're confused. You're like, what? Because you're still asking for stuff. And at this point, I was probably about 10, 11 years old. But I would always watch her because this was back in the day before direct deposits. <laughs> So she would get her check. <laughs> she would get her check. I would go to the bank with her. She would cash her check, put some money in savings, and then you have a little envelope, take the money home. And she had separate envelopes that she would sort the money out. And she had a little green booklet. I'm telling my, I'm telling y'all my age right now, but it was a little green booklet <laughs> and she had it sectioned off. For different things, car, groceries, light bill, water bill, um, clothes, whatever. While well, she had each little thing sectioned off, and she would balance her money there, but also would put money in the, put money in the envelope. So the envelope method that you hear a lot about, and I would watch her do that every two weeks on payday. It didn't really make sense to me then, right? Because she didn't sit down and talk to me about the flow of money it was just if you don't have the money you don't spend it and along with everything else of being a mother I thought back to oh I mean my because my mama may watch this video so I, look, let, let me give my disclaimer here mama everything you showed me and taught me I I appreciate it <laughs> but there were just some things I was like I didn't understand that so after having my own children as they got older I'm like oh let me explain to them why <laughs> if they don't have the money they don't spend it but yeah I just would watch my mom week after week and she still to this day does not believe in credit card debt she doesn't believe in it she she pays cash for everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. But what a good example, even just watching, mm -hmm. giving you a good place to then go from. So you decided you were going to lead by example, as well as telling 
your daughters explicitly some of these <laughs> lessons. Um, so what is your goal when it comes to financial literacy for your daughters then? Number one, for them not to make the mistakes that many of us make when we leave the house, right? Because we grown, we think we grown and we go out there and we get ourselves in debt uh, because, you know, we're thinking, oh, just get that credit card, swipe it. <laughs> and then you're older when you realize, oh, snap, I can't really pay this off. So, <laughs> so one of my goals is to maybe soften that blow a little bit, but also of building wealth and understanding the importance of wealth, building wealth at an early age, and also to teach them to have their money work for them and not them work for their money. Yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I wish... I wish we all learned that at a young age, um, you know, picking a lifestyle that you can live comfortably and not have, yes. to after, <laughs> you know, what you're wanting. Um, so how do you go about doing that with your, with your girls? Well, um, after telling them if you don't have any money, you don't need it. And realizing that didn't work for them. <laughs> <laughs> I decided, and, and I, I fought, Zoe, I fought tooth and nail on this. I really did. I fought my husband tooth and nail on this because I'm like, I'm not giving them an allowance. An allowance is free money. I'm not giving them an allowance. They're going to work for this money. But, you know, when you were about 10, because we start this when they're about nine or 10 years old, eh, they can't really go out and get a job. And I refuse to pay for chores because chores are part of life. So my kids do not get paid for chores. You live in this house, you will wash them dishes, you will clean up, you will help out. So <laughs> we decided to do allowances for our children. Yes, it's free money that they receive, but you want to go hang out with your friends because now as teenagers, they want to hang out with their friends. You won't pay for that. Oh, you want those shoes? Do you realize how much those shoes are? Um, I need you to figure out that budget and how you won't pay for that. Because what we, what we do is we give them an allowance and we do have... Um, a daughter who was 17. We started this with her when she was about 16. We gave her cl a clothing allowance as well. And she learned quickly, Ooh, that shirt, yeah, nah, I can't afford that this month. <laughs> so we, we are teaching them financial literacy through um, an allowance and they set their own budget. We um, have them save a percentage every month that they must put into a savings account. And then they have their long-term savings and their short-term savings. And they spend whatever they want on whatever they want. And it better last you till payday. Payday is on the first of every month. So they're responsible for their allowance, which to me, when you explain it like that too, I realized that, okay, so we may choose if you don't choose to do an allowance you're probably going to be paying for the stuff anyway mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. when it comes to treats or the mm -hmm. movies with the friends or whatever and so you're just kind of making them responsible for it um, yes and what exactly. a good budgeting lesson yes. for them yeah um do you, how do your girls do you know how they keep track of their budget well they all three are different they all three different. One of them, I can't figure out how the heck she keep track. I just say, okay, she knows when she has her money. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so what we ended up doing um, when we decided to do the allowance, we did look at what we were spending every month for all those extras. And that was also one of those things that hit us hard as well, because we realized how much we were spending on odds and ends. So it made us rethink our own household budget. And you didn't ask me this part, but I'll tell you, um, we 
basically broke it down to $5 per, per year of their age. So at 12, they get $60 a month because at 12, you're not really going that many places. Now, right. depending, we will get, I mean, if they're going to the amusement park, we are gonna cover that. <laughs> right. But if they're just, I wanna go to the store and buy candy, then yo, you better buy it out of, out of that money. But um, two of them have checking, or yeah, checking accounts, savings. Yeah, savings, savings accounts. And they are to track their funds within their savings account. Um, one is very responsible. She keeps a ledger and she can tell you down to the penny. Another one, she keeps it all up here in her head. And we have, some of you are gonna cringe when I say this, but we have recently given her a credit card. Um, but she is responsible for paying that bill every month. So she has been keeping track of her allowance by using the credit card statement, which I'm kind of like, girl, I don't know if that's a good way, but, but, she got that from me. She watched me do that. So I couldn't fuss at her, right? Because I can't say that's a bad way of doing it. Um, and then our youngest, who is 12, she is the stickler. She is a stickler. Homegirl only wants cash. Do not put money. She, she's like, I don't want, but she can't get a checking or a savings account right now anyway, or a checking account. A checking account, I keep saying saving a checking account. But she's like, I don't ever want a bank account like that put my money that I'm saving for when I'm grown in that, but give me cash. And she will count every penny. She is that person at the <laughs> checkout line. <laughs> she going to count. And if you borrow money from her, oh, you're going to pay her back with interest. And she calculates that down to the penny too. What a good math practice though for her. <laughs> like, I bet she's good at her decimals and her percentages. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, she she is on it. She has gotten me uh, numerous of times. <laughs> and if we don't pay her on the first, oh, she coming for her money. She's coming for her money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it was it hard for you in the beginning to not like micromanage or try to micromanage what they were doing with their money when you gave it to them? Yes. Because the things they wanted to buy, in my opinion, were like, why are you wasting your money on that? Why, why spend your money on, again, because we started this when they were about nine or 10. Right. So, you know, there's things I'm like, why are you wasting your money on that? Um, and then my husband is in the background. No, this is a life lesson. If they want to blow their money on that, let them face the consequences. That's so hard. Yes. Because you know that by the end of the month, they're going to be complaining <laughs> and you're going to have to deal with it. Yes. <laughs> yes. But it does get easier because now yeah. I'm like, la, 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 la. <laughs> and, you know, and it's like, hey, this is the real world because in the real world, you have to ensure all your needs are taken care of. So when you blow all your money, it's gone. Yeah. But we do give them opportunities as well to make additional money, not in chores, but they, all three of them do help me out with mamas and coffee. Uh, and one invoices with a late fee if I don't pay her on time. <laughs> I love seeing your posts about um, how how some of them come after you for for what you owe them. Mm -hmm. It's pretty great. <laughs> but they'll know. I mean, that's another big life lesson too. I mean, most people do some type of side hustle or are in mm -hmm. business for themselves now, and mm -hmm. that that's a big learning curve when you when you get into business is invoicing people and making sure you get paid. Yes. 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 Uh, and so um, I, we kind of already went over this, but would you say 
they, they're kind of learning lessons as they go. And when those natural consequences come is when those big talks happen about money. Yes. Yes. Um, because like we recently just moved from Northern Virginia to California and again, our oldest, um, she drops and we give her a gas allowance every month and um, we don't care. She intermingles her money any way she wants, right? So she's a foodie. So she, when we first knew she was trying this restaurant and that restaurant, she's going here, she's going there and she's shopping online and then she needed to get gas. And she went to the gas station and she was sticker shocked by the gas prices. And <laughs> it was, Hey, yo, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I guess you won't be driving anywhere. <laughs> you have, you have, you have a couple more weeks to go. Yeah. And that opened up a lot of dialogue right there um, of planning. Like, hey, you should have planned. Mm -hmm. this, we told you this. We told you this was going to happen. And you did listen. And yes, I let her sit there and try to figure it out. And she did. Um, she just decided she wasn't going to eat out for a few more times. <laughs> now, oh, and let, let me give a disclaimer here, y'all. We do feed our kids. We will pay for their food, <laughs> but <laughs> let me give this disclaimer. Special food, like if they want something that the family is not eating. Yes, yeah, if we if I cook and they don't want to eat it, hey, yo, you can go buy it or wait. You know, they didn't want to wait. I'm like, you don't want to wait? Well, I don't know. So go find me some food and yeah. But I had to give that disclaimer, Zoe, because I don't want people think I'm not <laughs> people coming <laughs> after you think you know, <laughs> pay for it themselves. Um, but that's a I mean that's a great lesson. Anticipating your future needs. Mm -hmm. Um and that's not like a set bill, like gas is like fluid. You have to think about how far you're gonna have to drive and the things you've got to do and that's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that from when I was and and like how many hours do I need to work so that I can get the gas money to go? <laughs> um that calculation that how many hours do I need to work is a fun one when you become an adult. <laughs> so speaking of becoming adults, uh your oldest is 17, right? And so she's yes approaching that launch from the house potentially um so what's your plan as your girls get older and closer to moving out on their own do you have like special lessons that you want them to learn or how are you handling that yes yeah, so um this will actually be her last year living with us she is a senior um and she is planning the school she's looking at her all on the East Coast and and she's fine. She's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to be out. So one of the things that I am going to work with her on and, and prepare her for the real, the real, the real, real world. And um, we're going to give them, we're going to add to her, to her allowance on this. But September, I'm going to start charging her rent and utilities because even with her i mean she'll be a freshman in college we're gonna still help her out but there is a difference in paying covering rent and utilities and buying stuff that you were just out in the world frolicking on for fun right you go and buy some shoes. I mean, there is a need for that, but at the end of the day, we're going to make sure you have the shoes you need, the clothes you need, but you decide you want those really nice pair. That's you won't pay that difference. But with her going into the real world, we want her to see and understand that rent and utility bills, you have due dates. And if it's not paid by the due date, there's going to be a late fee. And so we're, I am. I, look, 
my husband, my husband is you know this. He doesn't know. He going to hear about the first time when you watch this video. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> is that I am going to set her up with? You're going to pay. You know, even if it's twenty dollars a month, just something of teaching her how to really manage those funds in the real world. But yeah, but that was the other reason when I said we gave her a credit card um, was to get her into that practice because I think a lot of times when we talk to our children about money we talk to them we don't give them practical lessons and um let them kind of face those consequences while they're still with us and then also and this is just something that I thought back on for my own self with growing up that when I left the home I still went out there and made those in not to say that she won't make those mistakes because mistakes will happen, but being able to practice, to actually practice those things. It's like with anything else that we do with our kids, right? We teach them, but then we don't give them the opportunity to put it into real practice. So I'm going to set her up on the rant and I might put it on auto draft. Oh, that way, better hope she doesn't overdraft her account. Well, she doesn't know this. <laughs> her account is attached to our account. Yeah. With that, for that overdraft protection. Uh, but if she does, I will still charge her that overdraft fee. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's a great, I mean, really, because that's when you, grow up and are an adult that is like budgeting 101 right you have to mm -hmm. your set expenses mm -hmm. take that out of your budget and then decide what you have to spend um and that's a hard thing to do without practice i yeah. mean and that's kind of once you get your place or wherever you're staying then you have to figure that out and that's, that. yes. that's hard and i like your approach of like we're going to give them practice we're going to catch them when they fall and then hopefully they won't make as many mistakes. I mean, as many mistakes, yes. Yes. And, you know, and we, we've also given them opportunities. And this is a funny story for my oldest and my youngest. So the two are always in cahoots. Always. <laughs> they're in cahoots. My husband gave them $250. He said, there's $250. That's five of us in my household. Okay. He said, here's your $250, go to the grocery store and get groceries for the week. Now I'm thinking in my head, I never went to the grocery store and came back with 200, like came back with any money after 250 because they always want snacks, they want this, they want that, right? So he said, go to the store, buy the food for the week, everything that we need for the week and whatever is left over, you get to keep the change and split it. They went to the grocery store. You know how much they spent? How much? Like $150. Oh my gosh. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they fed us for a week. Really? And they weren't like, you don't get snacks or? The, no, we had no snacks <laughs> because the reality set in for them of, whoa, this is what we were spending. But our oldest, she said that she looking at the prices, actually looking at the prices of what she was buying. And uh, she's then then she's like, I remembered you had this app with the coupon. So she had downloaded that app and she used it. And I said, that's my question. Now they did keep the hundred dollars and they split it amongst themselves. I don't know, but I wanted my money back. I was like, give me my money back. I need snacks. Right. I, was I, gonna say, I would be mad if there were no snacks in my house. <laughs> but that's an amazing one. I mean, and that's one of the things like when we're talking about financial literacy and math practice, I'm always telling parents, you know, the number one thing I want them to do is, is give their kid cash to work with, especially mm -hmm. when they're younger uh -huh. and learn about that, because I feel like we don't have a lot of cash floating around now mm -hmm. that we have cards. <laughs> Yes. And, you know, like, I mean, I haven't gotten cash out of an ATM in like a year. 
I don't, maybe to pay for something on Facebook Marketplace or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is to budget. So like for a grocery trip, like to really think about and do that math in your head. I, I know we've all, or maybe we haven't, I don't know. When I was, especially when I was younger and didn't have probably enough money to pay for all of the things, you're walking through the grocery store, you're adding up all that stuff in your head. Yes. yes. And you're putting stuff yes. back, you know? Yes. Because you yes. need to make sure that you're not going to overdraft your account. Oh. Mm -hmm. But that's good math practice. To yes. add the stuff up in your head and to keep within a budget and to like really know. I, but it's also great because you get to know like, man, the stuff that I'm asking my mom for is very expensive. It's very expensive. Yes. And <laughs> they also checked the pantry and the Mark. fridge before they left. So I was like, that's how y'all ended up saving so much. But but yeah, we use shopping um, for math practice because um, I yeah, I follow Zoe. And that was because one of your questions you asked, and I didn't answer it. It was on one of the posts last week, I think, about using math. Our youngest loves fashion. Her nickname is Fashion Diva Girl. And there for a while, she did not like math, but she loved shopping. So we would do trips to the mall. That's for her cool. to shop for whatever little dress, whatever little accessory she wanted, and she would have to calculate. And it was really interesting because she would round. She was doing rounding. And I'm like, okay, how much? Because I was like, are you really? And she's like, mommy, I'm rounding. I'm rounding all my prices in my head. And so I know I'm like, oh, okay. And she taught me some. Because I forgot about rounding. <laughs> you know, <y> like, <laughs> because as you said, we go into the stores now and we just swipe. Mm -hmm. We swipe. So even if I have cash in my pocket, I'm not thinking about how much cash I have in my pocket. I'm just like, let me buy this, let me buy that. And I'm right. swiping. Yeah. That's, and, and that's the thing. Like, if you can just find that one thing that they're really interested in, that sometimes that at least eliminates the fight about trying to get them to practice what you want them to practice. Cause yeah, or, or like finding something fun, like we're gonna have a family fun night, but you need mm -hmm. to pick all the stuff within this budget, um, mm -hmm. you know, make it fun. But I love all of this that you're doing with your girls. It's so yeah. important. And we do, and you were talking about budgeting. Um, I'm sorry, but I have to share this because I, I shared a story of my youngest and my oldest, but my middle daughter, um, I tell her she has an expensive sport. She rides horses. And um, this was a, a hot topic for us for a little bit with friends because I sat her down and showed her the household budget and showed her what, to, some parents are gonna be like, what? But what portion um, she, her, her, her sport is in that household budget. And it wasn't to make her feel bad. It wasn't to, to make her feel any kind of way, but it helped, I think it helped her see overall of where money is being. So again, not to make her feel bad, but to, because I mean, we support that 100%, but to show like, hey, yo, did you just cut, you just came in here and asked for what? You spent your allowance and you asked me for this, again, not to be like, this is how much we spent for you, but sometimes, and again, she's older. So it was one of those things of, okay, let me explain to you why we are telling you no, or while we are telling you, we need to wait on that for a couple of months because you have a huge chunk of this, of this household <laughs> budget. Again, disclaimer is not to make her feel bad, but she understands. And it's also, you know, her trying to get her to look at what her future is because this is something you're doing and you want to continue. Mm, this is why you need to make these adjustments in your life now, homie. <laughs> right, a really good scholarship 
to an equestrian school. I went to a school with a great <laughs> equestrian team, if you're wondering. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I don't think that's, I think that that's, you know, and I'm sure that made her not take for granted mm -hmm. what she's getting to do as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I always like when parents find a good way to talk about that we can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, because that's not an answer that's satisfying to kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, yeah. But they don't want, and that doesn't change from when they five to when they are 17. <laughs> it just like, gets worse. <laughs> they, they need a reason. And it's like, well, why can you afford to buy yourself that thing? And I can't have this other thing, you know? It's, uh -huh. But mm -hmm. I, I like the, the thought of looking at that budget and like, here's how much these things really do cost and mm -hmm. take that into account. And I love all the things you do with your daughters. I love seeing your posts about the lessons that you're teaching them and, and their, their uh, reactions to that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's really valuable. And I really appreciate you coming on and talking to our audience about all of this. I hope um, everyone got something from it, an idea that they wanna use. Um, and I'm sure we'll have you back on at some point to talk about more life lessons or just <laughs> things because I enjoy having you and talking with you. Um, so thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. And we will link um, Sybil's accounts below, um, especially, you know, her Facebook group and her Facebook page and her <laughs> website and her Instagram. Um, so that you can follow her on all those places. Um, and we will be back actually tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be talking with um, Barbara, a professional organizer. So we're going to be talking oh. about um, like getting tune organized. In that one. I need to hear that. <laughs> you might want to tune in because <laughs> I'm going to be asking the hard questions because I need some organization in my life like that. Yeah. So, yes, yes. Thank you for having me. And yeah, what you see is what you get. Some days I'm like, oh, and then there's other days I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> but it's never a dull moment ever. <laughs> well, have a great day, Sybil, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. You have a great one, too. Thanks for having me. <laughs>